The guitar I'm about to build was meant to be the material for a how-to video, and a guitar that I would make using only hand tools. But about two months ago, I accidentally injured my left wrist, and had to wear a cast for eight weeks. After two weeks of inactivity, I started wondering, how hard would it be to make a guitar using only my right hand? Well, the answer would be kind of hard, but also pretty fun. So I'll let you be the judge. Here's how I built a guitar with one hand. I used ash for the body because I wanted to dye the body in black and still see the wood figuring. So an open pore species like ash was perfect for the job. Surprisingly, the contouring of the body wasn't the hardest part of this build, at all. It was very straightforward, as I just had to cut out big chunks of woods out of the body blank to get closer and closer to my final line. Then it was just a matter of rasping, sanding and scraping the remaining material, while being square to the faces. She literally just said, okay, I figured it out. Now look at what she's doing. I'm so proud. Here I'm marking the depth of the neck pocket with a marking gauge. Those marking wheels are great with oddly shaped pieces like a guitar body. Now this was actually the hardest part of the build. Not because it was physically demanding, but because of the way I glued my body blank together. From where I was standing, when I was using my chisel, the right side of the neck pocket went with the grain and the left side went against the grain. So it took me a very long time to fine tune it so it was that flat. Now this is what happens when you let your kids grow up watching Cartoon Network all day. Yes, that is part of the mold that I use for the shelf guitar. I added a pulley on my leg mortiser, and if it wasn't so hard on the leg, this would probably become my favorite way of using a chisel.
Okay, it may not look pretty, but everything's gonna be covered by the pig guard anyway. For the neck, I used mahogany because I had this beautiful piece left from my previous builds. And that's the shelf guitar, the neck throw, the two ukes, the bass, and my first custom build. So out of my eight builds, only one doesn't have a piece of that tree in it. That's fascinating. The truss rod channel was also a big concern before I started the build. But in the end, it was pretty easy when I understood that the truss rod channel is nothing but a very long, narrow and shallow blind mortise with a truss rod in it. I didn't have a hand router to clean out the bottom of the channel, so I went full pole sellers on this one. Was not ideal, but it worked. My fret saw blade snapped between those two cuts, but I had a replacement. My saw blade kept binding on this cut. I don't know why, and it was mildly annoying. Here I'm using a block plane to get to the final line. I would have used the jack plane if it wasn't so heavy and hard to use with one hand. Checking for squareness. And it's not square at all. So here comes more sanding. I'm never gonna get tired of this type of scene, so do expect more of that in the future. This is the first time I used rosewood, and it smells really good. Here's a fun fact. I had COVID two months before this build, and rosewood was one of the first things that I was able to smell again. That and fresh oranges. Go figure. This part was so tedious that I don't want to talk about it. My arm starts cramping just watching it. It took me three hours, but it worked. I don't have a fret press, but apparently a F clamp and a radio sanding block work just fine. Here I'm taking the headstock down to its final thickness, using an old woodworking trick that probably has a fancy name.
My mahogany is very dry and brittle, so I made a lot of passes to avoid unfortunate tear outs. Here I'm using the hand plane against the grain, because I like to live like there's no tomorrow. It's not stupid if it works. First and twelfth fret are now shaped. Now it's just a matter of joining the two sections. Another fun fact. I stole this therapeutic band from work a year ago when I was making my first guitar. And as I'm speaking, I'm using it for my physical therapy, so you reap what you saw, I guess. Again, I'm never getting tired of this. Shot at 1.4 with the camera on the floor, this is a haiku. At first I wanted to take the bulk of the material out with my chisel and finish the job with a carving gouge or something. But I quickly learned that by using the back of the bevel and pushing the chisel with my armpit and the weight of my upper body, I could have enough control to do the entire transition that way. So that's what I did. I still had to finish the job with a file. Obviously, I did the other transition the same way.
At some point, my physical therapist will ask me why there's wood glue on my TheraBand. Sanding. Sanding. And sanding. Here I'm marking the edges for the roundover. If you know the typical grain pattern around the guitar body, this is actually very easy to do. All you need is a sharp chisel. First, I remove some wood with my chisel to make a 45 degree-ish bevel, and then I sanded the sharp edges off. At the end I was getting really good at handling my vice with my butt. Also I changed my cast for the third time, hence the color changing. My forearm was shrinking and my wrist started to hurt again. I covered up the cast with the back to keep the sawdust from getting inside. That's also how I showered. I mean, with the bag, not with the sawdust. Here's my daughter raising the grain with hot water before final sanding, and being all smug about it. Now, this is one of my favorite part of making a guitar, right after actually playing the first chords when the strings are on. I got a ton of questions about what finish I use for this build, and the answer is very simple. I first dyed the body with the black dye from Rubio, then used an oil from the same brand on top of it. Their products are so easy to use and I'm so bad at finishing that I think this will slowly become my go-to finish. For the headstock and neck, I used tongue oil, and I left the fretboard unfinished. Bon, tu viens m'aider Oui. Moi, je le tiens comme ça. Toi, tu pousses. Pousse, pousse. Et voilà. On va mettre encore Ouais, 
Tu vas écouter. Pourquoi Pour qu'il n'y ait pas d'interférence électromagnétique. Tu sais dire ça Yes, I just made fun of her because she couldn't say electromagnetic in interference. Electromag electromagnetic. Well, the apple and the tree. When it comes to soldering, I have no idea of what I'm doing. So I just follow the schematics, but shh, that's a secret. I'll see you around for the next build, which is gonna be a detailed tutorial on how to make the very same guitar at home. In that video, I'm gonna cover up all the tools, hardware and wood that you need to buy. Then we'll take a deep dive into the plans. I'll take you into the workshop so I can explain all the techniques that I used, as well as some tips and tricks for our first guitar build. This tutorial is aimed at absolute beginners, so don't worry if you don't know anything about woodworking and have the dexterity of a dead tree. I was in the same spot not so long ago. For my long time viewers, don't worry, this is most likely the only time you're gonna hear the sound of my voice. I'll go back to the non-talking format with the lovely and relaxing sounds of woodworking tools at work, with the occasional intervention of my lovely yet hysterical daughter. Well that's it folks, thank you for watching and if you liked the video, don't forget to, <laughs> just kidding, do whatever you want.